prepare yourself for the highlights of the service, the encouragement by our assistant minister, Reverend Ann Shand, the gentle Reverend Ann Shand, who always has really wise, insightful words in her encouragement. I look forward to your words this morning, Reverend Anne. And so do we all. Good morning again. Let me add my own words of welcome from our beloved temple community, a family, a consciousness that reveals love, joy, peace, and prosperity to all. I share my thoughts this morning, beginning with a quote from our textbook written by Dr. Ernest Holmes, The Science of Mind, page 415. It begins like this. No good can come to us unless it makes its advent through the center of God consciousness, which we are. No good can come to us unless it makes its advent through the center of God consciousness, which we are, end of quote. Our God consciousness, our awareness of who we are, initiates the flow of good in our lives. Our good comes through us. The law of manifestation works in conjunction with the law of our being, our dominant thought pattern, our conscious awareness. This is principle and it cannot be changed. However, events sometimes happen. But at a deeper spiritual level, however, nothing from the external can detract, disturb the omnipresence of God within or without. Manifestations are effects, not cause. My apologies to all who were part of the experiment, but also I'm eternally grateful for the lesson and for the kindness and love expressed from you all. Thank you. In the words of one of our CSL ministers, and I quote, we pray with love that transformation will allow all individuals to use their talents, abilities, and capacities in a manner that benefits all for the good of all concerned, end of quote. Amen. So amen to that demonstration. A demonstration of conscious awareness of our role in the fabric of a successful community came forth though. One of the parents of a member of our youth ministry called to check upon me as the false email was seen and deleted. He shared this demonstration which manifested as a result of heightened awareness of the presence of God. He practiced, which can only lead to the manifestation of good for all concerned. The story goes like this. A medical practitioner of this country stopped at a service station in the corporate area. It was during the weekend of the heavy rains initiated by Hurricane Ian. A young man approached the practitioner, the gentleman, for a lift to somewhere dry along the road. The practitioner was driving a pickup truck. The lad hopped in and off they went. Temptation stepped in. The lad ran afoul with it and took the gentleman's bag when he jumped from the vehicle. Providence stepped in though. Yes, the lad took from the bag something he wanted, but left the rest which was of no interest to him. He promptly tossed the bag with the remaining items into the back of another pickup truck. Nowhere that truck was parked was a chance in a million near to a construction site. There were other places he could have thrown the bag, but he chose that truck which belonged to our parent. The remaining items were a laptop, important and official documentation of great value to the medical practitioner, 
who at the seeming loss stated that he had no wish to be part of Jamaica anymore. But his faith was restored in our country and our people because of the return of his valuables. The parents saw this bag in his truck, got in touch with the gentleman, and returned everything. I am sure there are countless demonstrations like this every day, but I felt uplifted because of the story and the manner in which the gentleman got back his bag. In no way do we know what the universe has planned for the actors of that story, but I'm sure it will be for the good of all concerned. One practicing parent made all the difference. Friends, we have to persevere in our practice of truth principles. The delicate day-to-day -day balance of standing on principle in the expression of our truth and integrity in the face of the uncomfortable, extenuating circumstance, sometimes it is seeming impossible to keep our feet planted on the firm conviction of truth. But we are not to give up as lack of faith tempts us to choose something else which may demonstrate more pain and suffering. So let us persevere as the life lessons will ultimately bless our journey with good and more good. Sometimes, you know, it is the memory of the past victories that will strengthen us and dissolve the immediate lack of faith. So let us press on. I quote from a book I have authored by Martha Smock. Someone has defined genius as perseverance in disguise. Each one of us has the potentiality of genius. The degree to which we express it depends on perseverance, end of quote. Yes, we may think the word genius is for special, brilliant people, but they are individuals just like you and me who persevere to allow their greatness to shine through. It is a stroke of genius to live in a manner that displays complete at one minute with life more abundant. So my thoughts are titled this morning, The Genius Factor. The use of our talents and our abilities centered in the presence of God, we can only conclude, will permit the radiance of spirit, a great soul to unfold in such a way that individual is a blessing to themselves, their country, and to God. Jesus, the master teacher, gives us a parable about the use of our talents and the perseverance of staying the course until our ultimate greatness break forth. The parable is from our Judeo-Christian Bible, King James Version, Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made five other talents. And likewise he that received two, he also gained another two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Note the above verses speak about application and use. In verse 19, the Lord of the servants came back. To the servants who had doubled the use of their talents, he congratulated them in verses 21 and 23, which states, His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord, end of quote. From verse 24, the fate of the individual with the buried talent is exposed. 24, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, 
and knew that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid my talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, that is thine. Imagine. The Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest, not, knowest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I had not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury, which is interest. 28. Take therefore the talent from him, and give unto him which hath ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. End of quote. A parable that has a lot of meaning, but also the methodology concerning the application of talents. A parable is considered a reference to the concept of higher wisdom or the direct influencing of the thought of the individual. That was defined by Dr. Herefully in his Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. The talent in those days was literally the currency of the era. No. Charles Fillmore of Unity fame, who wrote another metaphysical Bible dictionary, states, talents are our spiritual gifts. Life, love, truth, substance, intelligence, faith, power, judgment, peace, will. In fact, every inherent attribute of man's being having roots in God. All the gifts of spirit are to be used in man's fullest ability. The confident one uses that which is given to him and meets the commendation of the divine law and is led to greater possibilities. Hence the verse 20, in 21 and 23, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. There lies the perseverance, the genius factor to use what is given to us to the fullest extent. To step into the greater possibilities of infinite joy, success, prosperity, all the effects we can dream of. However, Mr. Fillmore went on to say, the too cautious one buries his talent because of fear, and he will not meet the requirements of the law which he discerns is very exact. In his caution, he does nothing and meets with condemnation as a consequence. There are those, he goes on to state, Mr. Filmer, who have a talent which they are afraid to use because it seems so insignificant. The fact is that the one talent includes all the others, and he who launches out boldly into the activity of the use of our spiritual gifts with a single perception of truth soon finds that there is a steady increase in due season and he enters into the joy of the Lord. Another way to look at this is if we lack confidence in our ability to do things spiritually, we still launch out with boldness, entering into activities that cultivate our spiritual nature, single-mindedly with perseverance and continue to make the highest claim on our reality as spiritual beings. Yes, we fear. Doubt, but do the work anyway and come to discover this morning. You will hear the antidote to fear. Well, for those who remain fearful, mm -hmm. spiritual lazy, spiritually lazy and accuse the law of hardness, then we know the consequences of what we sow, we reap. Charles Fillmore went on to give some a suggestion. He says, and I quote, do not allow yourself to come under the bondage of the I can't man. He is the one that believes in limitations, wraps his talent in them, and no increase is possible. End of quote. Metaphysician writer Erwin Seal, in his book, Learn to Live, 
gives a slight twist in his interpretation, which in my opinion adds depth to this whole matter of the genius factor. The parable he states has two parallel truths. The one, first one, fairly obvious, which is taken from a man went on a journey, left some money with three servants, five talents of silver to one, two to another, and one to a third. And the first two doubled it. The parallel to this is that it is the action of the spiritual money or the currency of consciousness. Three servants represents ourselves at different levels of consciousness, conscious awareness. He likens talents to our five physical senses, touch, smell, taste, hearing, sight, which we use to navigate the external world. But he states, and I quote, the spiritual thinker knows that there are five other senses, the spiritual counterpart, the internal senses, making them 10 in all. These inner or spiritual senses report spiritual facts which transcend the, mater the material world, end of quote. In fact, we use everything that we have to see beyond the physical. So if we go back to verse 16, the servant with five talents went and traded and made them other five. The degree of development of the spiritual senses determines the significance and the happiness of an individual's life. The perseverance to view the world from a spiritual perspective, from the lens of our consciousness, brings courage and strength, and the ideal man is one who has the inside and the outside world well balanced. His inner sense of spiritual reality is great enough to modify and even to transcend any discouraging in circumstances in the physical world, end of quote. What is this inner sense of spiritual reality? To quote from our textbook, it is an inner realization of the presence of perfection within and round about. It is the hope of heaven, the voice of God proclaiming, I am that which thou art and that which I am, God in man as man, end of quote. This can be achieved by being disciplined in utilizing effective prayer and constructive thinking, enhanced by our consistent spiritual practices such as affirmative prayer. And we have a three-step one, simple recognition, identification, realization. So in other words, God is, which is recognition, I am one with God, identification. Realization is, I am peaceful, I give thanks, and so it is. Or you can use immersion in the silence. That is one too. Sacred service, affirmations, meditation, contemplation in nature. Whatever we choose, we can persevere, thus enabling the genius within to unfold in every facet of our life's journey. The two talent individual is another level of awareness. There are strong drives, impulses towards doing good. The desire to grow, expand, create, achieve, but lacks the discipline and knows little of spiritual laws and their apl application. But this individual is confident and will push to remain focused and will achieve some level of success in their pursuits. The one talent mm, is at a level of awareness that hesitates, doubts, waits, and allow the world of effects to determine their reaction to life's unfolding. Even to desire good is against God's will. Overawed by events and the sovereignty of facts rules their expression. This one talent, friends, is our capacity to think. The law is in him, but he knows it not. He has buried it, and it lies dormant and inactive. The one talent man has the one great treasure of life, but he does not recognize it. It is buried in the earth of himself that is within and beneath his materialistic consciousness and sense-bound mind. Seal goes on to say he's doomed to repeat his present circumstances endlessly.
End of quote. However, there is hope. Use the consciousness of the presence of God that we have in the rough and tumble of this world or we will lose it. Friends, at some time, all the levels of awareness out picture in our experiences, but consistent work, spiritual practices allow us to shift to live a balanced life filled with the success, the prosperity, the joy, you name it. It is spirit's highest idea of who we are. So, what does that mean now for us as a community? Here we all are, coming together from diverse backgrounds, cultures, different genders, socioeconomic beliefs, practices, religion too, but drawn here by the love, practice of this teaching, and what it means to each one of us. Here we are together. We have produced a culture, a way of being, doing for this community. We also have made the decision to adopt a vision, which I remind you is a lighthouse of collective consciousness revealing love, joy, peace, and prosperity to all. So if we are to follow the vein of the parable of the talents, this vision is our one talent. How we use it will produce, and I quote, the temple of light, center for spiritual living, is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. End of quote. You know it, no? This is our one talent, the genius factor that undergirds all of us. We demonstrate this prayer and the possibilities of what we can accomplish and achieve together are infinite. This culture which we have created serves the purpose of shaping the expressions of life, our expressions of life. It provides an environment that supports and maintains us as we seek to refine our life's purpose into that which we live for and express as spiritual beings. We learn to appreciate our differences and we use that platform to foster connectedness, fellowship, stewardship, and service with God, living spirit almighty, that pure consciousness which we each individualize as the center of everything reflecting our community. This culture shapes our hearts, our minds, our bodies, every domain of our life's journey, our language, our beliefs, behaviors, habits, desires, with philosophy, predispositions, worldview, you name it. All other varying levels and layers, which I have not mentioned, are summarized under our consciousness as a community, which is our culture. This is what we stand for, and it directs where we want to go and also others who are influenced by each and everyone in this community. This culture is important to us, and by the law of attraction, it attracts into expression what is required for our unfoldment and evolution as a spiritual community. This one talent of ours, we are not about to bury it either. Where we want to go, by 2030, this is what we are becoming, a science of mind center of excellence that is spiritually empowering, culturally relevant, visibly financially thriving, and utilizing state-of-the-art technology in the delivery of our products and services through inspired, committed leader leadership reflecting a multi-generational vitality that is responsive to the needs of our youth and a diverse local and global community. We share our message of love, healing, prosperity, and inclusiveness through powerful messages, vibrant music, and social engagement with a distinctly Jamaican flavor. Our accredited academic institution delivers world-renowned educational programs and learning experiences 
backed by sound governance, principles that support our adherence to our mission, vision, and values. Impressive, don't you think? No. That is us. And not reading about somebody else or somebody else's church. Yeah. It is our church. <laughs> we have decided that the above is what we are now becoming, step by step, upwards and onwards. How are we going to continue in that path? I read from objective three under the transformational culture of our strategic plans. Living the core values by choice and with ease. Living the core values by choice and with ease. That is where we're going to use the talent, the one talent that we have. To live the core values. Let me remind you of the core values. They are on a picture each outside in the Vestibule. Peace, abundance, integrity, love, and service. Here I'm going to give you one or two of the hows for each value. How to engage those five core values. Peace. Be an instrument of peace in thoughts, words, and actions. Abundance. Practice spiritual mind healing, treatment for developing a deeper prosperity consciousness. So I'm going to teach you a short one, three steps. Recognition, identification, realization. God is abundance. I am one with God. Therefore, I am a channel for God's prosperity, wealth, opulence, anything you want to add after that. I give thanks and so it is. Practice, practice, practice. Integrity, practice sense of mind, principles, walk the talk, which means to be accountable, responsible, and truthful. And in three words shared by one of our congregants, and show up, show up. This is what it means to be a part of a community, show up up and let God do his perfect work in through as each one of us. Each one of us something special to give to this community. That's why we are here. And it is the one culture that is going to keep us. And love, see myself and others as expressions of God. Service, cultivate an attitude of helping one another. So my challenge to each one of us this week is to practice one every week until we embody all. That is the action. You're going to practice one, the next one, the following week, and so on. Friends, we are all volunteers. We know what we stand for and where we want to go. We have taken the baton with authority, authenticity, and by the power of the Almighty, through love, we can create a community that works for everyone. We are cause, not effect. The stakes are high, but as we do our personal spiritual work, we each in our own way with our individual strengths, talents, capacities contribute to a transformed community. Transformed community means transformed country and indeed the cosmos. In my summary, I give you a quote from Emerson. To believe your own thought. To believe that what is true for you in your private heart is true for all men. That is genius. End of quote. So let us persevere. We are the temple of light. A consciousness that reveals love, joy, peace, and prosperity to all. Dr. Holmes reminds us Today, the truth leads into the possession of everything necessary for my well-being here on earth. When I discover this inner kingdom with its spiritual gifts, the material gifts that shadow forth this inner kingdom will also make their appearance. End of quote. 
We are the temple of light, a consciousness that reveals love, joy, peace, and prosperity to all. Namaste. applause goes on for more than 30 seconds, you know you have done well, Reverend Anne, that was magnificent, magnificent. Starting off her talk with a title of a mere three words, the genius factor, she went on to give us a multi-leveled talk lasting 25 minutes or so, um, taking us all over, taking us deep within, taking us into the Bible, taking us into various um, learned books by, books by learned men. Really, really, very deep. She reminds us, among other things, because I it's so difficult to make a summary of the so many things that she spoke about. She reminds us that our good comes from our God consciousness. That is where it begins, with our consciousness, our God consciousness. She reminds us that manifestations, all the things that you see around you, the physical things, all the things that happen in your life, all these manifestations are effect, effects. They are not the causes. And if you want more of them, you have to go to the cause. And the cause goes back, where? To your consciousness. She tells us a story about a theft, which starts off really badly. Doctor's bag is stolen with all sorts of good stuff in it, important stuff. But the story ends well. The bag is returned with the important things to the doctor. And we know that all's well that ends well. So it was a story that had a good ending. She tells us that genius is perseverance in disguise, meaning that to some degree, we are all geniuses. All we need to do is be diligent. Look at the, 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 the word on the lectern, diligence, persevere, and you will awaken your genius. She tells us that very, very interesting parable, the parable of the talents, interpreting it, it it in a way that I had not thought about, but is really very interesting. And she says that those three th servants are just aspects of ourselves. Sometimes we make use of our talents. Sometimes we try to bury them, but do not bury your talent. And I could go on, but I won't, because it's now time for the musical item.